New banking numbers, the latest ones were State Bank of India and Bank of Baroda. So it's given us a pretty good picture of what the PSU banking and the private sector banking numbers have been so far in Q1. And Abhishek joins in with a review, a wrap-up. Abhishek. Uh, well, Rima, to begin with, you know, the net interest margin has been a negative surprise uh, for uh, many uh, large PSU banks. It's declined sequentially. And for across private banks at large, you know, the net interest margin has declined, which was on expected line. However, the decline has been much higher than anticipation. So anticipation was about 10 to 15 basis point decline on net interest margin. But it has declined as high as 35 basis point as well. So the range has been between 15 basis point to uh, about 30 35 basis point kind of decline for private banks and PSU banks as well. Uh, cost of funds has been the big issue across the banks. The liabilities are coming in at a higher cost. Now that they have raised interest rate on deposits, it is the incremental flow uh, in Q1 that has actually hurt on cost of deposits. Core operating profit growth has been weak on a sequential basis given the fact that cost of funds have weighed in. Treasury gains have been massive, so they have been aiding the return ratios or the bottom line earnings for the banks. So what's worked, asset quality stability continues barring the seasonality uh, slippages and uh, asset quality remains uh, pristine. Slippages trend are on the lower side. Uh, stress in the balance sheet continue to decline and balance sheet is at its healthiest, healthiest uh, that you are seeing in last 10 years or even more. What's not worked, the net interest margin contraction. Now, Street was factoring anywhere between 5 to 15 basis points, but the decline has been 15 to 35 basis point kind of a range. Operating profits have been led by treasury gains uh, so this may or may not continue going ahead uh, casa ratio is one of the lowest we are seeing uh, customers switching from low cost deposits to high cost uh, deposits like term loans etc uh, deposit traction has been weak for many banks cautious uh, stance taken over there uh, to protect the uh, pnl uh, that is seeing over there uh, because it is tough to manage the cost of funds back to you got that abhishek thank you very much for that wrap helpful uh, to kind of jog our memory about what this first quarter has been all about when it comes to banking numbers. Well, to talk more about this, we have with us on the show today Saurabh Kumar, Senior Analyst, India Financials at JP Morgan. Saurabh, thank you very much for taking this call. So as our colleague was highlighting, and I think that's really been the hallmark of the season. We went in anticipating some margin compression, but it seems far more pronounced with some of the PSU giants, I mean, SBI, Bank of Baroda, than some of the large private sector names. What has been your key takeaway from the Q1 season and what are the highlights and the key watch points that you would keep in mind? Yeah, so I think broadly the 1Q1 season has been very unexciting for banks. We have not seen any major EPS upgrade coming for any of the major banks. And uh, in some cases, there have been downgrades on account of margins and operating costs. So... That's where the struggle is, that uh, you're not getting earnings getting upgraded up. Margins, they went up. We are clawing back uh, some of those gains. Broadly, the return on asset across banks, uh, again, this is a bank-specific topic, but across a sector, I would say, is above cycle average levels. And that needs to moderate down. And we will get that moderation over the course of next two, three, next three to four quarters. So what really matters to our mind is loan growth. Uh, as long as your loan growth continues to hold up, you will get basic compounding, but very hard to argue that margin profitability or as defined by return on asset improves from here because remember last year was exceptionally good. We had higher margins, better growth, lower credit costs. That's not a sustainable situation. So so just, just a follow-up, uh, uh, you know, is this already priced in? The fact that uh, we're not, I mean, no one's, I, th I don't think anyone's talking about margin expansion but how much more severe would the margin compression, this depository pricing, how much more severe will the crunch be? And has that already been factored in or is the market yet to factor that in, in stock prices? I think there will be some uh, more to go in the next two quarters. Remember that across banks, margins would have gone, depending again on the bank, would have gone up by between you know, 30 to 100 basis points. You were, you've only seen 15, 20 basis point clawback. So they, again, depends on the bank, but there are clawbacks still left. So, as I said, what matters is ROA uh, or profitability. And uh, we think at that level, there is maybe 15, 20 basis point, uh, you know, downside across banks uh, in terms of the return on asset uh, profile, which will probably happen over the next, you know, a uh, few quarters. But again, all this gets offset as long as growth keeps coming in. 
what matters is growth because I think market in its uh, wisdom has rightly not priced in above normal earnings uh, into valuations. Uh, so I think market has been right around that. But where I think mark, uh, where from a long term perspective, what matters to valuations is growth. As long as that holds up, then you will get basic compounding. Very hard to argue for re-rating from here on. Hmm. Uh, Sarath, there is no risk of earnings downgrades, right, uh, in the subsequent uh, quarters because everyone we spoke to was very bullish about banks and the earnings potential of the banking industry over the next two years. So that's question number one. Is there a possibility that we could see earnings downgrades because expectations are on the higher side? And two, any notable differences between the PSU banks and the private sector banks that you would like to highlight as a trend? Yeah, so I think, uh, so you're right, we have seen EPS downgrades in few banks. So on, a, on account of higher OPEX and uh, in some cases names as well. So from above, so again, it's versus expectation. So you are seeing uh, that downgrade coming. Going ahead, I would say, again, it's a, the broader issue is the growth. As long as we continue to print this 13, 14%, 14% system credit growth, we should broadly be okay. I think we have had one round of cuts, but if growth disappoints, then there could be a risk of downgrade. Uh, upgrades would be very hard to argue for from here on. So that's uh, one. Uh, between PSUs and privates, I think broadly, again, same issues with PSU banks that we have seen the return on asset across, if you look at major PSU banks like SBI, BOB, 1.2% percent ROAs are, again, one would call them above cycle levels. Uh, they are not built for printing 20% ROEs sustainably. So I would say you would again get a clawback uh, in terms of profitability to more normalized return on equity, return on assets. Uh, so in that sense, they are, let's say, around levels where, uh, in terms of at least uh, around levels where private banks are in terms of the same, uh, I would say, thematic, except that the valuations here are still cheaper. What we have seen with PSU banks is that the slippage rates or the forward flow rates of NPLs across the three major PSUs that we cover have been very low which means that the asset quality here could continue to surprise positively. Uh, that if, Given that the forward flow rate of NPLs itself is collapsing, the credit cost could remain low for an extended period of time. Okay, and what, uh, what if you could give us some more details on the asset quality that you expect from here on, how much of an improvement do you expect in the next couple of quarters, two or three quarters from here? So normally uh, we see uh, Q3, Q4 is generally better, but I would say, uh, again, depends on the bank, but uh, you could still see provisionings, uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, let's say, uh, across private banks be in the 60 to 80 basis point short ballpark, in public banks will be in the 50, 60 basis point ballpark, but uh, that will be the broad range. But again, bank so specific. Sure. Saurabh, uh, just checking, uh, though we're discussing banks, just checking, do you also look at non-banks in India? Yeah. Okay, so then allow me to take this question because there's a lot going on, uh, you know, in that sphere as well, right? Uh, there are uh, these, uh, uh, you know, payment giants. I know you're not going to get into stocks, but, you know, it is a point of discussion, the way there's this path to profitability, even for giants like Paytm. There's a huge disruptor trying to come into the, uh, to the landscape now with geofinancial services, Bajaj Finance uh, obviously has grown into a very large size. So in the yeah. non-bank space, uh, what do you think investors should keep their eye on? And you know, where do you see value there, if at all? So in non-banks, I think uh, broadly they've come out of a five-year downturn uh, from 2018, if you recall. I mean, they have been uh, pretty much in the funk. Uh, growth has been exceptionally higher across non-banks. So growth is materially better than, let's say, the banking sector in the non-bank and BFC space. And they're also benefiting from the fact that a very large player is now moved out of the bond market. I think uh, the challenge here is basically the underwriting. So capital ratios are very good across non-banks. Uh, most of them are making a big push in the unsecured loans. Uh, and the quality of underwriting is going to be very important. There are very early signs uh, where, let's say, in some of the sp uh, spaces, we have seen some marginal rise in, let's say, unsecured loan delinquencies. Uh, we'll see whether, you know, that is sustainable or, uh, you know, it kind of remains at these levels. But that's what the market will worry about, that the growth which is there, which is almost in many cases 10 to 15 percent higher than banks or almost 2x of the banking system, will that lead to any AQ pressures down the line? 
And as long as market gets comfort on the underwriting quality, which is here, because remember, these books are not hugely seasoned except for a guy like Bajaj or somebody, uh, then I think uh, valuations can sustain. Broadly, they're trading at around one-time growth. So as long as they can print this 25-30% growth, the valuations can sustain. But again, the challenge is the underwriting. So no, but so what's your base case? Will we see more AQ pressures in non-banks or no? You think they'll manage the house pretty well? I think from a uh, from an uh, from a earnings perspective, this year should be fine. So I don't think we will see anything this year. But certainly next year, we should see some normalization of of uh, credit costs across these entities. Okay. Uh, Saurav, we'll leave, the, uh, we'll leave the discussion here for now. Thank you very much for joining in. When we return, we get you excerpts.